Michael, thank you so much for joining us here at Super Return International. You're currently co-head of industrial tech at Triton. So what does this mean for you in terms of this environment at the moment and the challenges you face specifically in that area? So we see a couple of, uh, of very interesting dynamics at play right now. One is the overall market, uh, the valuation, uh, the, the contraction of, of the public markets. Um, interesting to see what, what it means and when will it translate uh, into, the, into the product market. Um, the, the multiple arbitrage or the multiple differences between the more traditional tech companies and the more conventional industrial companies. Um, that's one thing. And then of course, in the wake of the pandemic, uh, what secular trends, what new phenomenons are at play, and what does it mean for, uh, for new investment opportunities for specific sectors and for the existing portfolio which we have at Triton. Because obviously we've seen an evolution in this area over the last decade, but do you think, you mentioned the pandemic there, do you see COVID as having accelerated those changes? Absolutely, absolutely. So i give an example, when we, right before the pandemic, we did a fairly uh, comprehensive sector strategy, uh, what we call it a full potential plan for us as a sector, same as we ask every portfolio company uh, to do one. And, uh, and among other things, we, we have mapped a lot of trends which we are seeing, which we think back then is relevant for us. We uh, condensed them, uh, we built some umbrella brands, and uh, you know, three overarching trends were for us uh, in, in, the, in the sector, uh, the whole future of supply chain, yep. smart living, and the circular economy. Now, obviously, there's a lot of sub-trends and sub-sub-trends and themes. Now, um, if anything, I think all of them have further gained momentum. Uh, I'll give you an example. Future of supply chain uh, with the dislocations in the global supply chain, uh, with an even more pronounced labor shortage in Europe particularly, uh, it's super critical to drive operational excellence, to drive automation on the shop floor, to be less uh, labor dependent, to have to move away from just in time to just in case, to deal with the supply chain. So all forces which have been there before, but we believe that the last two years have further accelerated the development and put it even higher on the management agenda. So lots of evolution, but one thing that this industry is pretty good at is coping in those situations and actually making money in those situations. Uh, absolutely. And, uh, you know, we at uh, Triton, we think of ourselves as an all-weather investor. So we, we, uh, we have this clear ambition to make money for our investors in any market environment. And, uh, and indeed, I, I agree with you, you know, uh, 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 private markets have this advantage that we can see through and can take a longer time perspective on certain developments. And arguably, the current environment is challenging. I think it would be very naive not to admit that. It's very important to understand the moving parts and, and what risks they uh, entail. At the same time, uh, every change implies opportunities. Yeah? And when you see these sort of challenging periods and you say there are opportunities there, what sort of teams do you need in place to take advantage of those opportunities? So we, as I said, I'm, uh, I'm co-heading in industrial tech, so we are not a tech investor. We are an industrial investor who wants to be on the right side of technology trends in the industry, who aims to partner up with uh, companies to further accelerate their technological development. And, um, and in that environment, we need confidence in-house. We need people who are able to understand trends. We need people who are smart enough on the subject matter to figure out who are the right advisors we need, who are the right form executives we need to team up, um, how to connect the dots, and also be then able to be a good partner for management to sort of figure out which are the most important ones, which ones are the most relevant ones in order to build a better business in our holding period. When you come to an event like this, there's 3,000 people here this year. What do you hope to take away from it and what's valuable to you about being with your community and being able to share ideas? So uh, obviously, you know, in our job, you read a lot, you watch a lot of TV. Uh, that's one thing. But, you know, spending time over coffee, chatting, experience exchange, having the ability to really go into a dialogue, uh, I think that's extremely valuable and, uh, and, uh, and adds a totally different additional perspective than just reading uh, the financial times. So if somebody was to have a conversation with you this week, what do you hope they take away from that conversation and uh, what do you see as being really important and, and your priority in the next 12 months? In the discussion with me, yes. my discussion partners? Um, 
indeed, I, I want to bring across. Uh, that's uh, sort of what I want to bring across to my team and hopefully also to my discussion partners here. What I just said before, this is a, a turbulent time. It's very important to understand the challenges for new investment opportunities, but also our job is not only to make investments, our job is also first and foremost to make uh, these investments better, to make uh, to build higher quality businesses. So we spend a lot of time uh, uh, working with these portfolio companies and force them to see all the opportunities. So there's opportunities on the investment side, there's opportunities for our portfolio companies. Um, and, uh, and I also hope that I can bring uh, across some of this positive um, spirit uh, uh, and uh, that we're not getting into a doom and gloom uh, loop here in the current, currently very turbulent uh, environment. It's quite a responsibility to, to be sort of helping those companies and one area that specifically perhaps private equity could be even more influential in is the ESG area yes, as well. Absolutely. absolutely. And, uh, you know, if I, want to be, if I want to be very honest with you, uh, probably three, four years ago, I thought, okay, that's another sort of, we need to take the box, we need to be, uh, this has totally changed. And I, I wholeheartedly believe that this is indeed by now one of the most significant value drivers. It's, it's both, it's a risk aspect that you need to understand, but first and foremost, we want to then see it as a value driver. Yeah? Um, and uh, you know, we have, we have companies in the portfolio which benefit from an existing tailwind, Give an example, uh, air quality, right? Um, uh, so we have uh, a company which is a leading European solution provider for air handling units in commercial buildings. They obviously not benefit from this current environment. But then there's other portfolio, uh, portfolio companies like a crop nutrition uh, company, fertilizer company. Um, but frankly, when we bought the company two and a half years ago, it, uh, it has been our biggest CO2 emittent in the portfolio. Now, what we are doing now with management and we are partnering up with them is, um, that they become the first uh, CO2 neutral fertilizer company uh, globally. So to our knowledge, uh, we have the most aggressive plan. We have crippled complex. And so taking a company in a, in a space which per se is not very ESG friendly and completely repositioning the company is um, is a very fascinating task and uh, it's, it's really fun and uh, it's rewarding. Yeah, I was going to say, it gives a real worth to what you feel you're yeah, doing too. Absolutely. Thank you so much for sharing your insights. Great to talk to you. Thanks, Thanks for having me. Thank you.